Hello guys, welcome, welcome. Today, we're gonna go over sales pipelines. You're gonna find what you've been missing. I guarantee you this video is gonna shine a light on all of your blind spots when it comes to sales. Uh, I apologize for the lighting. This is off the cuff. I was sitting here on my computer just doing some work and I thought, you know, nobody really knows this stuff. Like, I, I need to bring this to the table for all of you agency owners out there, all of you entrepreneurs, all of you guys and gals that are trying to grow your business. So I've got this tiny little whiteboard <laughs> that I'm gonna show you how to set up a pipeline with and show you where your blind spots are. So first, let's talk about the problem, okay? Here's the problem. What most of us do, and this is just to give you guys an example, so this little post-it note represents uh, a lead, okay? Represents somebody I'm talking to. So I've got their name on there, uh, their budget, and what it is. So right now, it's a lead, okay? It's a, it's a lead, it's a post-it note. This is a great, just as a side note, this is a great way to handle your sales process using post-it notes, moving them across the whiteboard. You could use a Trello board, you could use whatever you want, but this is a great way to keep an eye on your sales, okay? Without spending a lot of money on a CRM. So, we've got our lead. Most of us, when we start out, all have the same problem. We try to go from lead to opportunity. We just jump over here and actually start giving proposals. Sometimes we just jump all the way over here, right? We just we answer the phone and they tell us what they need or what they want. Maybe it's one or two phone calls and boom, we're jumping to proposal. Stop it. Stop it. That's a terrible way to run your business. Not only have you not gained any trust, you've not been able to give them any value, you haven't created a relationship, and you've got one, maybe two interactions before you're asking them for money. That's like taking a girl out on a date and talking about children and marriage. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way, right? You've gotta build up a relationship. So let's go over each one of these so you guys know what these columns are, because I know they might be hard to read. So, first column, lead. Second column, qualified. Third column, opportunity. Pre-scope, proposal, notice that's way down the line, and then whether they're won or lost for a follow-up. So, let's talk about leads. You get a lot of leads. There's a ton of leads that we get. A lead is an unqualified opportunity. Uh, think about it as if you went to like a party and collected a bunch of business cards, that's a lead. You don't know if they have budget, you don't know anything about them, you don't know anything about their company, you just know that they said, oh hey, you build websites, here's my card, give me a call, or something like that, right? So, that's a lead and you don't know what's gonna happen. When we get to qualified, that's where I want to be, right? So qualify, how do we qualify them? Well, maybe it's the investment they're willing to make, uh, maybe it's the time that they're, you know, maybe they, they want something now or soon, right? Uh, maybe it's the geolocation, maybe it's the market fit. Most importantly, will they follow my process? So if they check all these boxes, now they're qualified and I can move them to my opportunity stage. So the big thing to remember here is moving them from left to right. I'm not trying to go from lead to proposal. I'm not trying to sell them at every interaction. I'm trying to build value. So after they're qualified, now we've got an opportunity to do business, right? They are qualified. I wanna work with them. They have some cash. They're, they're a qualified opportunity. Now I've got an opportunity to do business. Now, here's the magic sauce. This is what most people miss out on. Up until now, we've only touched on investment, prices, budget, stuff like that. We've only touched on it. We haven't drilled into it. This is where we're gonna drill in. We're gonna actually talk about the budgets and what's possible. Now, here's a little tip. Don't ask them what their budget is. <laughs> That's, they're gonna lie. They're not gonna be honest. It doesn't matter. You know, it's. It sounds like you're performing wallet surgery and they're gonna fight with you over the money, so stop asking them what their budget is. That's a stupid question. Ask them questions like, 
How much have you invested into the internet over the past six to 12 months? How many websites have you built? What's the typical investment you make on a website? How does that work for you? Do you feel like you're getting a good return on your investment? Are you doing other things that are working? They're gonna tell you what those numbers are. They're gonna give you everything you need to know about what they're used to and what they're comfortable with. And you can lead them, right? Well, so you spent $10,000 on your last website. Are you looking to increase that budget to get more ROI? Do you wanna stay there, right? So that's how you handle this opportunity area. That's when you should really be talking about budget. Personally, myself, I start talking about it in the qualified area. Even in the lead area, when I'm talking to somebody, I bring up money first thing. You have to bring up the investment, aka budget, within the opportunity stage. You just have to. So now, they've told you how to sell them. They've told you what they want to spend. They've given you what they are used to spending. So now we do the pre-scope, okay? The pre-scope is not a proposal. The problem is when you jump to proposal, we wonder why we're not making any money. You jump to proposal and you don't know if they can afford it. You don't know if they want to spend that kind of money. It's a guess. It's a crapshoot. Maybe you get it. Maybe you don't. It's, you're probably not going to win. So the pre-scope is where we discuss the possible investment, right? So after we went through the opportunity, the qualified, the lead, we went through these stages. Now we get to say, well, typically customers that are doing what you're trying to do and what you're trying to do, they invest X to X, right? So like if I was talking to a customer and they said, yeah, we want, we want all these things, bells and whistles, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say, hey, that's great, great idea. I'm going to add my two cents in there, give them some value. And I'm going to say, typically when we work with a client trying to do what you're doing, their budget or their investment is typically around 10 to 15,000. Does that sound like something you guys would want to do or did you fall out of your chair, right? So they're going to tell you exactly what they're willing to spend. They're going to give you the answer. So they give you that answer. You guys sort of negotiate. You're not surprising them with a number. And now when you get this person to proposal, you actually know exactly what they're going to spend. You really don't have any more questions. You know everything. Look how many interactions we've had. One, two, three, four, maybe five or six possible interactions. We've built value the entire time. We've communicated with them. Conversations equal sales. So we've had lots of conversations. We've built up a lot of value. Now we can do the proposal. Now we can ask. We've earned the right to ask for their business. Now, let's go over some little blind spots that you guys might not be aware of. The first thing is over here in the qualified area. Number one, don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to say this project is not a good fit. They're not willing to work within my process. They've never spent the kind of money that it takes to spend on, let's say you sell five to $10,000 websites and they say, yeah, you know, we, we spend about a thousand dollars on our websites or whatever. You're going to need to up their thinking or get rid of them. They're, they're not going to come up to 10 grand, right? So you have to be the one to educate them and show them why they should invest. And if they're absolutely not willing, then get rid of them. Don't take them to the opportunity, the pre-scope or the proposal. So the next thing you have to be aware of this lead area, we don't spend a lot of time here. Leads are a collection of information, names, numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So when you get a lead, you don't spend a lot of time there. You want to get them to the qualified area. And here's why I might have 200 leads. I'm not going to try to call those every day. I might have three or four qualified customers, one or two opportunities. That's where I focus my attention. If I have 30 minutes today to do a sales call, first, I'm looking for opportunities that I'm going to call. Second, I'm looking for the qualified people that I can call, turn them into opportunities. The last thing I'm going to do is go to my leads file and start making calls there. Okay. Prescope. This, this one always gets everybody. Some people call it a solution presentation. Some people call it like a discovery call. 
Um, we'll get into discovery and some of that. There's, there's much more complex processes you can do, but this is a very simple one that I wanted to bring to the table for you guys. Your pre-scope is nothing more than like a capabilities document, right? That says, here's what we can do. Here's our services. Um, it's got information about you and solutions to the problem that you're speaking to. So you should, if you're in pre-scope, you should already know what their issues are. You should know why they contacted you. And this is your chance to say, here's your problem. Here's our solution. This is how we can come together. Here's the typical investment ranges that people spend on this kind of stuff. So you've got dollars here, probably ranges, you know, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 20 to 30, depends on how open ended. If they can't explain to you exactly what they need, you might have to go into more detail, like more discovery and stuff like that. But usually they kind of can explain what they need and you can add your two cents, make recommendations, and you can come up with a budget, right? That suits their needs. Now I can take that information and I can develop a proposal that they're going to say yes to, right? Here's the deal. The leads, you have 0% chance of closing a lead. Qualified, 10% chance you're going to close that. These are, these are like standard international percentages, okay? When you have an opportunity, maybe you got a 20 to 25% chance of closing them. Here's the kicker. Pre-scope, 50% chance. All you gotta do is not screw it up, right? So when you get to pre-scope, you have a 50-50 chance of closing them. If they move forward, you have a 90% chance of closing this deal. How cool is that? How cool, knowing that I'm gonna spend one, two, three hours creating a proposal that I have a 90% chance of winning. I'm not wasting my time. I'm not worried about it. I've already talked about budget. We've got a great relationship going so far. They probably like me. And now I can get them to the win column. This is how it works, guys. Super simple, right? Super simple. Now, a couple of rules. Let's say you lose the deal. They say, no, bad timing. We don't have budget, whatever. Never delete them. You follow up. Follow up for ever. <laughs> Actually, if they tell you to kick rocks, you can take them off your list. But what we do is we follow up until they buy or die. That doesn't mean every day. That means if they say, no, you know, we're good. We're going to go with somebody else. Great. Maybe I check in six months later. I, I can't tell you guys. I've experienced this. My clients have experienced this. This is a mate. You will be surprised. You'll be amazed at how much business you get two, three, four years later. There's been times we've talked to customers, they've hired somebody else, six months later we call them, the project was a disaster, <laughs> they're not happy. And then they come our way, right? The market educated them, and now they see that their little $5,000 investment didn't do shit for their company, so they come back to us to spend real money to get real results. That's when I ran an agency, that's how it worked. This doesn't mean you call them every day. I just, I can't stress that enough. I would put them in what I call like a tickler file, I'd hit them up maybe once a quarter, twice a year, once a year, depending on you know how they work and who they are. But the big thing here is I've sold hundreds of thousands of dollars in projects when I ran my agency just by keeping people in the loop, right? Just following two, three, four years later. I mean, my agency was around for 15 years. There were people that got back to us five, six years later and we finally sold them something. So don't ever discount the power of follow-up. You have to follow up. Okay, next thing that I would say is take action on this. Create your board, right? Um, if you have questions, put them in the comments below. If you really wanna learn how to do sales, if you're really interested in how to scale your business, uh, just a shameless plug, click the link down here, click the link below, Look, learn about our sales accelerator program, if you do apply, you get a 30 minute, no pitch strategy call. I won't pitch you anything, guarantee. It's 30 minutes of your time to get value from me. Now, there is a sales goal there, right? <laughs> like, my goal is that in 30 minutes, I'll find a blind spot in your company or help you solve a challenge or help you solve an opportunity. You know, bring the thing that keeps you up at night, 
I'll help you solve it. And you'll be like, wow, if, if that's what happened in 30 minutes, what would five or six weeks do for my company working with Jonathan at Revenue Love? That's the goal. So check this out, rewind the video, watch it again. Questions, put them in the comments below. Let me know how we can help. We can start a conversation on this. This is, this is the way to do it, guys. 20 years I've been doing it this way. There's no other way. This is the best way to handle a sales pipeline. There are more complicated ways that we can go over if you have a larger business or you do discovery or you have a longer sales process or you're selling really high ticket items. But generally, 90% of us can get away with this type of pipeline to keep control of our business. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a great day. Now go sell something.